ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream, the cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. <laughs> the Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant and the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Well, it sure is mighty nice riding out here on the range, but I reckon I'd better head for home. Come on, old paint, let's get it going, boy. Whoa, boy! Whoa! Oh, come on, horsey! Whoa! Well, what do you know? Somebody put glue on the saddle. I always wish that I could be a cowboy For riding and a rope and where the wind is free But now I wish that I was not a cowboy Cause look what's gone and happened to me I can't get off of my horse all day and night I ride among the cattle I can't get off of my horse Cause some dirty dog put glue on the saddle Someday they'll bury me out on the prairie How far among the sagebrush where the skies are blue But when they dig a place for me to rest in They'd better make it big enough for two Cause I can't get off of my horse All day and night I ride among the cattle I can't get off of my horse Cause some dirty dog put glue on the saddle On the saddle On the saddle On the saddle, on the saddle. Some no good on reload down sneaking thieving Cussing cattle rustling Dirty dog put glue on the saddle you know something? I feel like saying a discouraging word. <laughs> a very special tip on hair appeal, girls, from famous beauty authority, Kay Dumont. Lovely hair, shining with natural highlights and shadows, sparkling with silken softness, inviting with clean fragrance. That's the natural hair appeal that men prefer. And now such natural hair appeal can be yours with one touch of magic, Luster Cream Shampoo. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo is an amazing new dainty cream that whips up like magic in harder soft water into a mild, gentle lather that sweeps dullness away. Out of her wealth of cosmetic lore, Kay Dumont blended gentle lanolin with special secret ingredients to achieve this delightful new cream that leaves your hair so easy to manage, so soft and shining with the natural appeal that men love. Ask for the economical dollar jar of Luster Cream Shampoo at your cosmetic counter, also 30 cent and 55 cent sizes. Discover the secret that women and girls of all ages are learning everywhere. There's a world of glamour in each dainty jar of Luster Cream, the cream shampoo for true hair loveliness. <laughs> Well, a great many people go through life complaining of their bad breaks, and some of them quite justifiably. But have you ever considered the awful plight of our young hero? Out of over two billion inhabitants of this earth, he's the only one who is Dennis Day. <laughs> yes, that's trouble enough for any man, a point he's now impressing upon his girlfriend, Mildred Anderson. Gee, I get so darn discouraged, Mildred. Oh, now you mustn't, Dennis. You've still got me. And I'd be proud to be your wife no matter what you were earning. No, Mildred, I can't even afford to buy a wife the necessities of life, much less the little things other women have, like shoes. <laughs> well, it won't all 
always be this way. I know it won't. Doesn't Mr. Willoughby hold out any hope for the future? Oh, sure. He says I could make more money right now if I'd help him swing the deal, but I don't know Mr. Harding in any way. Wait a minute. What deal? Who's Mr. Harding? Oh, he's the president of the Seattle San Antonio Montreal Railroad. (laughs) A railroad president? Yeah, and Mr. Willoughby wants me to think of a way he can sell him his property on Maple Avenue. Mr. Willoughby wants you to think of a way? Yeah, he says he's tried everything a normal mind could conceive. (laughs) But why should Mr. Willoughby think Mr. Harding could use his property? Well, it's got something to do with a new right of way. Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't even know what a right of way was until Mr. Willoughby explained it. I thought it was something that unless you're crazy, you give to another driver if she's a woman. (laughs) Well, this must be a new right of way for Mr. Harding's railroad. And Mr. Willoughby's promised you a raise if you can help him, huh? Yeah, he's pretty safe, don't you think? Ah, I do not. Dennis, you're going to sell that property to Mr. Harding for him. Me? Well, why not? All you have to do is go to this Mr. Harding and talk to him personally. Oh, no, Mildred, really, I... What's the matter with you, Dennis? You have absolutely no confidence in yourself. Well, who's got a better right? (laughs) Dennis? He isn't an ogre. He's just a man like yourself. All you have. Oh, good morning, Mr. Anderson. Good morning, my boy. (laughs) Morning, Mildred. Hi, Daddy. Did Mother make a train all right? Yes. The chief pulled out with the chief at 747. (laughs) Well, that's good. Daddy, you've got to help me. I'm having trouble with Dennis. Trouble? Yes. Can you imagine a person being afraid to talk up to another person? Why, no. Not since 747. (laughs) Well, you see, Mildred wants me to call on a railroad president and sell him some property of my boss's, Mr. Anderson. But, gee, this Mr. Harding is such a big shot. Well, what if he is, my boy? All you have to do is act like a big shot, too. Who, me? Sure. Now, I'll show you what I mean. Now, I'll pretend I'm you and you act like this big shot railroad president would, okay? Okay. All right, now, here we go. Mr. Harding, I want to see you. Just who are you, young man? My name is Dennis Day. Drop dead. (laughs) Oh, no, no, Dennis. He wouldn't say that. He'd certainly be polite. Okay, please drop dead. (laughs) Oh, he wouldn't say anything of the kind. He'd say, come in and talk, young man. I like your spunk. To me? Well, certainly. Boy, are we pretending. (laughs) I'm sure Daddy's right, Dennis, if you'll just try to be a little aggressive. Absolutely. Firmness, that's what you need. Now, say it like I do. Mr. Harding, I want to talk to you. Mr. Harding, I want to talk to you. (laughs) Not my voice, Dennis, my tone. Now, now say it again, and for heaven's sake, try to be aggressive. It's no use, Mr. Anderson. I've got too much you in me. Dennis Day, you've got to go through with this You've been a tame little kitten long enough It's about time you began to act a little more like a tiger A tiger? A tiger If you want to be convinced it's the only way Go down to the store and try it out on Mr. Willoughby On Mr. Willoughby? See, that's not a bad idea, my boy Now, all you have to remember is not to let your courage run away from you Oh, it won't The rest of me will be going much too fast for that (laughs) Dennis Day, you're a tiger. Dennis Day, you're a tiger. Dennis Day, you're a tiger. Well, here goes. Mr. Willoughby? Yes, Dennis. Ah! (laughs) What was that? That was my new personality coming out, Willoughby. Well, put it back in and start mopping the floor. (laughs) Mopping the floor? Why, that makes me laugh. <laughs> you were playing with dynamite, Willoughby. Huh? You heard me. I'm not a tame little kitten anymore. I'm a great big hungry tiger. And from now on, I'm going to act like a tiger. Dennis, don't you like your job here anymore? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well? Well, I just wanted you to know that while I'm mopping up, you might hear a little snarling. <laughs> That's more like it. What came over you, anyway? Oh, I was just trying to develop a new personality for your sake, Mr. Willoughby. I'm going to take over the Harding deal for you. You're going to take it over? 
It sounded less fantastic when I said it. <laughs> Sound fantastic if anyone said it. But it isn't. I can be a firm, aggressive salesman when I want to be, Mr. Willoughby. I'll just march up to him and say, Mr. Harding, you need Mr. Willoughby's property because... Uh, well, because... Say, maybe he doesn't need it. <laughs> Now, look, Dennis, I asked you to think of an idea, but that's all. I don't want you messing up this deal, you understand? Stay away from it. But, Mr. Willoughby... That's final, Dennis. You're a fine, fine floor mopper. And you carry out an excellent pail of golf. <laughs> that's where your talents end. Yes, sir. Which reminds me, when you're through with the floor and the garbage, I have an errand for you... Do you know where the express office is? No, sir. Good. Drive over there in my car and pick up two cases of Kalak water for the store. But, Mr. Willoughby, if I don't know where it is... It'll take you that much longer to get back. <laughs> Goodbye, my boy. <laughs> and so our young hero sadly busied himself with the floor and the garbage. And when these menial tasks were concluded, he was off in Mr. Willoughby's car to do his errand. And as our hero drove toward the express office, the bitterness within him, that not-wanted feeling, grew stronger with each block. The depressing knowledge that he... Hey, wait a minute. Is there something wrong with that front wheel? Well, yes, it's loose. Dennis, watch it. It's coming off. Dennis, look out! <laughs> It's all right. Dennis, I'm here with you. You've been in a smash-up. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I remember now. Gee, I'm in a hospital, huh? Yes, you were brought here after they picked you up. Mildred, did they... Did they pick up all of me? <laughs> of course, silly. You're all right. The doctor says you can leave in an hour or two. You were just unconscious from shock. Mildred, what about Mr. Willoughby's car? Is it... Is it... Yes, it's a complete wreck, Dennis. I just phoned him. He should be regaining consciousness pretty soon, too. <laughs> oh, you should have heard him, Dennis. He says he'll be waiting for you the minute you get out of the hospital. Oh, Mildred, stand on that chair. On the chair? What for? You're going to kick me right in the appendix. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly, Dennis. There's got to be a way out of this. Mildred, this time I'm afraid I'm finished. That car will cost $500 to replace, and if I know Mr. Willoughby, it's either that or jail. Perhaps I can help you, young man. Huh? Who said that? Why, it's the man in the next bed, the one completely wrapped in bandages. Yes, your conversation just now gave me an idea. Oh, I see. Would you mind pointing your face in my direction, sir, so I can tell which end of you is talking to me? <laughs> Not at all, my boy. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is William Harding. William Harding? Not the William Harding, the president of the Seattle, San Antonio, and Montreal Railroad. That's right. Good golly. The one man in the whole world I wanted most to see. And here I am talking to him, face to bandage. <laughs> Mr. Harding, did you really say you might be able to help Dennis out of the trouble he's in? I did. I'll gladly give this boy a check for $600 right now. Enough to pay for that car and still have something left over. Providing he agrees to impersonate me for a period of ten days. Impersonate you? I beg pardon, Mr. Harding, but are those bandages covering a big hole in your head? <laughs> no. You see, I'm having a little, uh, <clears throat> uh, domestic difficulty with my wife. Uh, there's another... Well, uh, another, uh... Woman, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> You're a man of the world. <laughs> well, uh, my doctor has told me I must have ten days of rest and quiet, or he won't answer for the consequences. So I can't have these two descending on me here at the hospital. However, if it's reported that I'm not here, but back at my but office... But, Mr. Harding, Dennis probably doesn't look anything like you. My dear, I've been in a bad accident. This boy is about my build, and a good makeup man could do wonders with a gray wig, dark glasses, a little paraffin here and there, and a bandage or two. Nobody expects me to look exactly as I did. Oh, golly, Dennis, this may be the answer to our prayers. I'll bet you can look like Mr. Harding. Miller, this is ridiculous. I don't want to look like someone else. But it's only for ten days. 
And besides, Mr. Harding may have been a very handsome man. What do I care about a different type of good looks? I'm happy as I am. <laughs> no, Mildred, I won't do it. I won't, I won't, I Dennis, won't. Let us think. Who will be waiting outside of this hospital for you? You mean? Yes, Mr. Willoughby. Okay, send for my face. Good boy. <laughs> As far as I can go with you, Dennis. Here's Mr. Harding's offices. Gosh, I hope this works. Do I really look like him? Your makeup's perfect. Only remember to stay out of warm places. You know what the man said about your nose melting? Believe me, I'll never stick it into a hotter corner than this. Well, goodbye, Mildred. Goodbye, dear, and lots of luck. Why, Mr. Harding. Uh, hello. Oh, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see you back with us, Mr. Harding. Thanks. It's nice to be back, Miss uh, Jones. Williams. Oh, yes, sorry. You've been with me such a short time. Nine years. Oh, of course. <laughs> sorry, not quite myself yet. Well, I guess I'd better step into my private office here. Oh, not that door, Mr. Harding. Huh? Oh, yes, for a minute I didn't see the sign. <laughs> this is your office right here. Are you sure you're all right, Mr. Harding? You... You seem so different somehow. Well, naturally. Terrible accident, you know. Whole locomotive blew up. Yes, I know. But your voice, it's, it's changed completely. Oh, didn't they tell you? Smokestack hit me right in the throat. <laughs> well, I better get down to business, Miss Williams. Yes, sir. Now, first, there's the case of Miss Shirley Dolan. I'm in alone, Miss Williams. Oh, but Miss Dolan's case is very important. We fired her, and she claims we had no right to. She says she's a member of the Railroad Brotherhood. The Railroad Brotherhood? Oh, yes. Well, really, that girl's mother should have a talk with her. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Harding, are you sure they didn't let you out of that hospital too soon? Certainly not. Well, that's all, Miss Williams. Oh, there's one other thing that's really important, Mr. Harding. It's the track foreman on Section 12. He's worried about the grades there. What would you advise, sir? Oh, I don't care. Give them all A's and B's. <laughs> Harding, really, you should go home. You just... Hello? Who? Joyce at Grove City? Have I decided to build a round house there? Well, don't be silly. If I build it, it'll be a square one like everybody else's. <laughs> All right, Miss Williams, you may go now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And please, sir, do take it easy. Well, Dennis, my boy, so far so good. If you can fool a dame who's known you for nine years, you can fool anyone. This may be my... Miss Williams, I told you... Oh, you're not Miss Williams. Billy! Oh, darling! Dearest darling! I take it we've met before, ma'am? <laughs> Billy, don't mock me that way. Aren't you even going to kiss me? Take it easy, kid. My wife may drop in any minute. Your wife? But I'm your wife. Oh. How do... Why must you toy with me like this? If you don't care about me, at least think of Bernice. Bernice? Our daughter. Oh, that Bernice. <laughs> well, she cried into her pillow all last night. And do you know why, Billy? She couldn't find her handkerchief. <laughs> oh, Billy, what's wrong? You, you speak so strangely. You look at me so strangely. I'm doing the best I can, dear. This is no cinch. <laughs> Billy, what did that accident do to you? I never heard you talk like this. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Hart. Oh, am I interrupting? Yeah, it's a pleasure. What's up, Miss Williams? <laughs> well, it's that Mr. Willoughby, sir. He's here again about some property. He's been here every day this week. Shall I have him leave? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, tell him I'll meet him back at his store in 15 minutes. Well, too bad, dear. I'd like to spend more time with you, but it looks like some business has come up. Oh, oh I thought maybe... Well, today's the 24th, you know, the day I always buy flowers for my mother. Yeah, too bad I can't go with you. Why don't you buy her a nice gardenia corsage? A corsage? Sure, the old girl will get a big kick out of it. <laughs> oh, you beast. You know perfectly well that mother passed away in 1922. Gosh, well, in that case, I guess you wouldn't get a kick out of anything. <laughs> Yes, 
Yes, sir. Mr. Willoughby, I'm William Harding. Mr. Harding, you did come. Oh, you don't know how happy this makes me, Mr. Jones, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Willoughby. A cigar, perhaps, a little liquid refreshment, or possibly I can offer you a piece of this excellent Page and Shaw candy? No, thank you. I don't smoke, drink, or enjoy myself. <laughs> I'm here to discuss your property. Oh, yes, sir, my property? Well, I don't know, Willoughby. Oh, please, Mr. Harding, please, sir, consider. After all, I'm... I'm practically an employee of yours. You're an employee of mine? Well, everybody knows that you're the biggest stockholder in the Weaverville National Bank, and, of course, the bank owns this building, so you might say I'm your employee. By Jove, I believe we will say that. Mr. Harding, what is this look of wild elation on your face? (laughs) Willoughby, this place is filthy. Get to work scrubbing that floor. Huh? You heard me hop. Now, see here. About your property... Yes, sir, I'll get a scrubbing brush right away. I want a real job, Willoughby. You'll use a toothbrush. (laughs) A toothbrush? The property, Willoughby... Whatever you say, sir. I uh, understand you have a boy working here who usually takes care of the floor and the garbage. I understand also that he's very badly underpaid. Well, but Mr. Harding... Willoughby, I'll consider your property on only one condition. This boy must have a good raise. He's entitled to eat well, live properly, buy good clothes, and run a small car. Yes, sir. uh, How much should I pay him? Twelve dollars a week. (laughs) Yes, sir. And I want that in writing, Willoughby. I won't even talk about the property until I get it. Yes, sir, if you say so. I'll I'll take care of it right this minute, Mr. Hardy. Boy, this is really living. I should have thought of a new face long ago. Why, I could have had all the... Billy, chérie, mon petit chouchou, my beautiful, lovely Billy. Huh? Oh, Billy, what is the matter with you? It is me, your little Madeleine. Oh, you mean... Gee, you're French, huh? (laughs) <laughs> but of course I'm French uh, What did that accident do to your head? Don't you remember how we used to talk in French for hours? Oh, sure, man, appetite. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, you darling Vous n'avez pas besoin d'être si insolente avec moi Parce que vous n'êtes même pas venu me voir pendant que j'étais à l'hôpital N'est-ce pas? Yes, ma'am <laughs> Come here, Billy. Hey, wait a minute. Put your arm around me, Billy. Come on, and and kiss me, and kiss me. No, please, this face would never stand up under it. <laughs> but, but, Billy, I don't well, understand... Your... Oh, oh, pardon me, Mr. Harding. I, I didn't know you had a visitor. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Willoughby. This is Miss, uh, Miss, uh, a girl I'm pretty sure I go steady with. <laughs> I beg your pardon. So... She did follow you here. I've caught you two together at last, eh? What right have you to object? Billy is mine. How dare you? I'm his wife. Oh, but it is me, love. What? Perhaps I'd better leave. Oh, no, please. Stay and keep me company. (laughs) Billy, you come here. Don't you listen to her, Billy. You're mine. Yours? Oh, he spent every day for the last five years with me. Is that not true, Billy? Uh, if you say so. Oh, yes. Well, he spent every night of the last ten years in our home. Isn't that true, Billy? You bet. Gee, I wonder how I ever got time to run the railroad. (laughs) Well, I'm his wife. I'm his wife and I'm taking him. He belongs to me. And I say he belongs to me. Oh, is that so? Come here, Billy. You take your hands off him. Come here, Billy. Girls, please, you're getting awfully grabby. He's mine, I say. Now, let go of him. I will not. I'll show you. Hey, wait. Don't hit her. No, you're taking her part, eh? All right, take that. Ooh. Why, why, how dare you hit my Billy in the... Why, Billy, your nose came off. (laughs) Oh, that's a wig he's wearing. This isn't my husband. Dennis Day. (laughs) Why, you... Mr. Willoughby, believe me, I can... Forced me to give you a raise, huh? Wanted me to scrub my own floor with a toothbrush. (laughs) I suppose you also wanted me to carry out the garbage. Oh, no, sir. I'll go right in and get to work on it. Yes, do that. Only we're not carrying it out in pails anymore. We have a new system. Here. 
Oh, my gosh, a pair of tweezers. Dennis Day will be back in just a moment with a song. But first, here's a fact worth knowing. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And that's important, as our Colgate players are going to demonstrate. Scene, a party with everyone in a conga line, except our Colgate leading man. Why? Let's find out. Come on, Bill, get into line. No use wasting a waste, especially a waste like Judy's. You can say that again, chum. But Judy's been signaling me to keep my distance. Sure wish I knew why. Oh, you're out of step with Judy because of just one thing, Bill. And for the straight dope on that, you better see your dentist. And here's what Bill found out. Scientific tests prove that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And Colgate Safe Polishing Agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth, cleans them thoroughly and safely. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over other brands tested. So to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely, for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. With Charles Dant and the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing one of his most recent RCA Victor recordings, Christmas Dreaming. Christmas dreaming A little early This year No sign of snow Remember, doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. And this beauty plan with palm olive soap was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, 36 doctors proved the 14-day palm olive plan improves all types of skin, brings fresher, brighter, younger-looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. This is Vern Smith reminding you that if your community did not observe daylight saving time, the Dennis Day program may be heard starting next week at a different time, so consult your local newspaper. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>